What's up everyone, it's Scotty with MoneyVest. So in today's video, we are gonna be talking about the bond market. So more specifically, the fixed income. So the treasury yields are absolutely skyrocketing. Right now, um, they are up a little bit over 2.9, almost 3% on the day. And of course, the equity markets are struggling a little bit. And I really wanna to touch on the equity risk premium, which we have discussed on the channel before, which is essentially a understanding of what you're getting for investing in fixed income, which is the risk-free rate, the 10-year treasuries, versus investing in equities that you are investing, let's say in S&P 500, and what's the forward earnings yield on the S&P 500 as well. And I've got a few more other charts that I wanna go over and why the markets are starting to rotate back lower a little bit and the treasury market is ripping higher on the day. So as always, if you enjoyed this video and find it helpful, make sure that you drop a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're just joining us for the first time. And a link to our Discord and Patreon is gonna be down below if you're interested in joining us. And of course, getting access to all the members only private videos, including all the trade alerts and ideas and market updates, uh, as well as the private community. And of course, the trading view charts and, and uh, watch list as well. So link's gonna be down below. First week of the month is the best time to join if you wanna take advantage of that. So this right here is the manufacturing index, which came out today. So we did get a very, very strong manufacturing print with an actual number sitting at well over 50. And of course, the consensus being 48.3. So this basically shows very strong manufacturing activity over in the U.S. And this continues to kind of reiterate how strong the economy is, not to mention how strong unemployment and the jobs market is as well. Because we have discussed in our previous videos the entire employment index and the ratio between JOLS and unemployed persons. So JOLS, we are going to get that report tomorrow. So tomorrow at around 10 a.m. Eastern, the job openings come out. And unemployed persons is going to be on the first Friday. So this Friday, we're going to get the unemployment persons report as well. And this ratio is really what the Federal Reserve cares about. And this is going to be sitting at 1.37 at the moment with the jobless claims sitting at roughly about a quarter million people filing for unemployment insurance, unemployment benefits every single week. So we'll update this number when the time comes. But really, this is kind of like the precursor suggesting that manufacturing jobs are strong. The index is coming in strong, 50.3, which again is a sign of expansion. If this number, manufacturing index, purchasers, managers, index, productivity, if these numbers are above 50, usually that's a sign that it's a very, very expanding economy, very much of a growth type economy, as opposed to contraction or some type of distress in the economy, which was, again, the consensus at 48.3. Now, three-month bill auction. This is another thing that I want to cover, and this will kind of show you that the, that the demand for short-term treasuries is much stronger than long-term bonds. And what I mean by that, if you take a look at the bid to cover ratio, right? So bid cover ratio here and bid cover ratio is one of the best ways to kind of gauge how strong the demand was for the bond auction. Right now, we're looking at three months. Three month is very much short term duration bonds expires in three months, matures in three months. Total amount $70 billion. And take a look at markets appetite. We're looking at 2.83 bid to cover, meaning there were almost three times as much bids as there was supply or or basically asks for those auctions here. And the three month bill rate, 5.23% was the awarded yield. Take a look at six months. Six months was even stronger than three months. So this right here is going to be six months and you'll notice a bid to cover was 2.85. So 5.125% in the awarded yield with a bid to cover at 2.85, anything over one, just basically tell us that the bids were higher and more aggressive than the actual cover or the asks on the auction. So both short duration bonds coming in with a very, very strong demand. And uh, this is kind of, again, increasing that sort of skepticism around investors that, okay, manufacturing index, very strong, unemployment, very solid, and the demand for short duration bonds also coming in at a very rapid and aggressive pace, which is resulting and of course, the 10-year treasuries, I mean, just take a look, huge rip higher, up almost 3%, back over 43 And of course, on the back of TMF, dropping over 5.5%, not to mention TLT, also dropping over 2% because we're seeing such a massive increase in the overall treasury markets. So if you come over to yields, so it's going to be all the way at the bottom, you'll notice that most of them are basically up significantly so if you come over uh you know the the spread the 10 years up over 2.9 five years up over 2.7 the 20 year is up 2.6 the 30 year is up 2.6 as well i mean they're all sitting available over 4.3 4.4 4.5 basically suggesting that investors demand a higher rate of return if they are going to take that risk right now the lack of demand 
because the long duration bonds is anything over one year. Short duration, if you come take a look at three months, six months, right? Not, 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 not that much. They're still sitting at 5.3. So the demand is strong for that part of the shorter end of the curve, which is exactly why we're not seeing any much of an increase and it's basically flat but it's really the long duration the longer end of the curve which is where we're seeing a lot of momentum with over two two and a half percent three percent momentum which is why investors are demanding for higher yields because lack of demand more supply leads to prices going down which is exactly what's happening with tlt bond prices go down and yields go up because that's the inverse correlation between the two so as the yields go up that's why we're seeing the us 10 year the five year the 20 year the 30 year the three year and the one year Everything that's over one year is sitting well over one and a half, two, two and a half, all as much as 3% in the green at the moment. Now, this right here is um, from Seth Golden on Twitter. I, I found this very interesting. He basically said, stop saying stupid. You know what I mean? EPS yield versus the 10-year yield spread is the worst in 20 years. If you use this spread during the 1990s dot-com boom to avoid equities, you would miss a tremendous bull market, to put it mildly. In other words, this is not a thing. Now, the reason why I somewhat disagree with this analysis is because if it weren't a thing, eventually the bubble would not have bursted, right? If this was a thing, that's exactly why this was a cautionary tale. It was telling us to be aware, be cautious, be alert, so that we don't really fall into the trap of investing in something that is not priced well on a risk-adjusted basis. I tell these people every time, it's all about the risk-adjusted return and trying to understand what is the potential while also accounting for the risk. So this right here is the spread between the earnings yield and the bond yield. And you can see that right now we're once again a little bit on that negative side because the 10-year treasuries are of course sitting at well over 4.2, 4.3%. So you can see that we're sitting at 4.3 with a massive run up right now. And if you come over to the S&P 500 valuation, the actual earnings yield on the S&P is sitting at 4.3. So now we are once again, the spread is negative. The spread, actual spread between the 10-year treasuries and the earnings yield on the S&P 500 is negative by 0.02% or two basis points, two and a half basis points negative because right now the 10-year treasuries are 4.325 and the earnings yield on the S&P is 4.3. So we are now once again negative. So that's exactly where we are at the moment. Slight, slight negative over here, dropping below that 0% line, which the last time it happened, was again back in 2000s. It actually happened for a very long time. So 1980s, it was pretty much negative and it stayed there for a very, very long time before finally seeing that sell off, before finally seeing the actual bursting of the bubble that we actually witnessed in the 2000s in the dot com bubble. So right now we're once again negative here and this right here was another time where we were negative back in 2010, 2011. This was after the bubble bursted of the great financial crisis uh, as well. So the bottom line is that yes, it does matter. It does matter because it is a little bit of a gauge to better understand that on a risk adjusted basis, doesn't even make sense to be investing in equities at these levels. Now, this right here is from Quincy Crosby, Chief Global Strategist at LPL Financial. And he says that this market is overbought by any measure. And at some point, you'll see a pullback. And then at that point, you'll start to hear the bears come out again, suggesting that it's deeper than just a healthy correction. The market needs a correction in order to start seeing more money come in from a money market accounts to feel more constructive as well. And while all this is happening, gold prices just chilling at all time highs at record highs, pushing higher on these expectations, whether the Federal Reserve is even going to be cutting rates or not. And this right here is from Joseph Cavatoni. I think it's a really exciting moment in gold. And what's really driving it is I think many market speculators really getting that confidence and comfort in Federal Reserve rate cuts as well. So if you come back over to the market, right? So 10-year treasuries coming back over to 4.3%. I think this is going to be a very much of a pivotal moment in the 20-year treasuries and of course the bond market in general, because we do actually have some scheduled uh, some basically schedules here. So this is the tentative auction schedule for U.S. Treasuries. So right now we are going to be over here uh, on April 4th here. So we got the three year, the very important April 4th. So Thursday, April 4th, 2024, which this right here is actually going to be the auction date. So auction date is the most important thing that we have to look for. And if you come down, you'll notice that we just kind of went through the short duration, 13 week, 26 week bills here. Those are three month and six month. That's the actual, the ones in yellow over here. Then on April 3rd, then we've got the 17 week, the four week, which is one month, eight week is going to be the two months. And again, we've got the three months and the six months on April 8th. But now comes the big one, April 9th, April 10th, and April 11th three dates to keep in mind because we've got the three-year note, the 10-year note, and the 30-year bond reporting for the auction on those days, Wednesdays and Thursdays. So this entire schedule for the U.S. Treasuries 
is something that I can share in our Discord. So I will be sharing the link over there if you are interested in kind of understanding the whole schedule for 2024. So I'll share the link down there. But April 9th, 10th, 11th, a very important date for the longer duration, longer end of the curve auctions here to better understand how the demand is and to also look at the bid to cover to whether see whether there's more potential for yields to be higher, whether investors are demanding for a higher yields moving forward or not. So this is obviously on a net net basis, not going to be great news for equities because S&P obviously selling off 26 basis points. The Nasdaq is also lower on the day down about basically flat at the moment. But, you know, on a net net basis, if yields continue to push higher, that's going to be putting more and more pressure, more impact on equities, specifically growth stocks as well. So hope you all enjoy this video. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And uh, as always, make sure that you drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you're just joining us for the first time. Links to our Discord Patreon is going to be down below. Happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.